What would it be like to use nothing but Windows XP in 2020? Why would you want to? Why did I do it for three weeks? It's been at least eight years since I used Windows XP as my main operating system. I wanted to know how it holds up today. Can I run the everyday tools I need, or do I need to find alternatives? When I decided to switch to Linux full-time, these were some of the questions I had. And that turned out just fine, so why not explore this and cash out on some of the nostalgia? I could have just spun up a VM for this, but what fun would that be? Plus, I have all sorts of other hardware laying around. I actually had parts of the last PC I used with Windows XP. So I built a PC for this project, and I used an Intel i5-760, that's a 4-core running at 2.8 GHz, an Intel Socket 1156 motherboard, 4 GB of Corsair DDR3 1600 MHz RAM. It's not period appropriate, but I used an LG Blu-ray drive. It's all I had laying around. For storage, I used a Kingston 120GB SSD for the main storage and a Western Digital Blue 500GB hard drive. The graphics card I had on hand and originally used was the GeForce 9800 GT, which isn't a great match for this system, so a few days after the build I bought a Sapphire R9 270X. The total cost of this build ended up being right around $50 because I bought that graphics card. I was a little unsure about what I should do about installing the actual operating system. Should I pull out my old disk and just install it how I would have in 2002? I don't even know if I can download the updates at this point. Should I visit a CD site and download a fully updated version? Eh. With some research, I found out there's still a community out there based around XP, and as a result, there are community patched versions. I decided to use the Integral Edition from Zone 94. It's very different from the installation experience I was used to with XP. They preload drivers so to get you going, so you don't have to, you know, put your SATA driver in there, for example you know, load it from a floppy disk like the original XP wanted you to. And they also provide you a very nice script that can install a lot of helpful programs during the install, like browser, uh, video program, video player. One of the struggles with using older hardware is you can't always find the drivers you need for everything unless you already have them archived, or you can find someone else who does. The manufacturers don't always keep those old drivers on their support sites. Luckily, there are programs you can download specifically for this. I used to use Driver Pack Solution, but wasn't totally happy with it. I recently switched to using Snappy Driver Installer, which came recommended by Phil's Computer Lab. Thanks for the tip, Phil. It's a very nice tool for all your retro driver needs. I'll put a link in the thing. There are several browsers to choose from, and Internet Explorer is still not one of the ones you want to use. You can use Basilisk, which comes with, with the Integral Edition, Pale Moon, Opera, or you can even use an outdated version of Firefox if you want. Basilisk and Pale Moon were forked from Firefox's, or the Firefox a number of years ago, but have little relation anymore. I really like Pale Moon. It ran just about everything I wanted, like Library, YouTube, Nextcloud, Plex, Discord. But Netflix was a little bit of a bugger to get working. The only trick I found that worked was to install Microsoft Silverlight, which, yes, still installs on 32-bit Windows XP, and run Firefox version 52 and the latest version of Opera at the same time. As long as both browsers were running, Netflix would play. Very strange. I guess it's good I don't really use Netflix. I was able to use OpenOffice for documents and spreadsheets, so there were zero problems in that department. I'm a regular user of both TeamSpeak and Mumble for voice chat, but unfortunately TeamSpeak's newest version isn't supported on Windows XP anymore. Mumble, however, works just fine. Although my Arctis 7 headset needed to be plugged into work, it didn't like me using the wireless, which I'm okay with. I know everyone is wondering about gaming. 
I still have a bunch of physical copies of games I used to play on XP, and I loaded up and played some of them, like Fear, Far Cry, Halo, and yes, it does run Crisis. But what about Steam? Yep. Even though Steam dropped support for XP on January 1st of 2019, if you head over to archive.org and download the November 26, 2018 version, it starts and runs mostly just fine. The problem I ran into was I would get errors when trying to buy a game, which is kind of like a deal breaker, but you can play all of your stuff that's already in your library. Obviously, you're not going to be able to run all the newest titles, but I had a blast playing Half-Life, Portal, and Doom 3. All in all, it wasn't a bad experience at all. Would I want to go back to using Windows XP as a daily driver? No. I'm definitely happier on my beastly Ryzen machine running Linux, but I hope to revisit this in the future for other random things that my brain comes up with. I hope you enjoyed this little walk down memory lane and stay excellent.